morning everyone, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my channel. Uh, here on this channel I do videos about books and autism, so if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, um, I am autistic uh, and uh, I love to read, so uh, if that sounds like, if you'd like to join the discussion here, um, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and it only takes a moment and it really helps me out. Um, I'm very grateful to uh, all of my subscribers and everyone who comments on my videos. I love, absolutely love reading your guys' comments. Uh, it really makes my day. So, uh, that being said, uh, I haven't done an autism related video in a while. So I just felt inspired. Uh, Christmas is coming and I thought I would do one today. So uh, my usual disclaimer, I'm not trying to offend anyone or start any kind of arguments. Um, so please in the comments just be respectful um, of each other and of me and uh, we can have a, a, a good discussion. Um, I can only speak from my personal experience as an autistic person, um, so when I talk about, um, you know, being an autistic person or, you know, having autism, um, well, sorry, not really having autism, just being autistic, um, I am simply only speaking from my personal experiences. I cannot speak for other autistic people. I cannot speak for all autistic people. Um, so everything that I'm about to talk about uh, is all coming from my point of view, from my personal experience only. Okay, so um, yeah, so again, I might have a slip of the tongue that happens, but I, um, I am definitely not trying to speak for all autistic people. Um, I, this is all just coming from my own experiences and my point of view in my life and my opinions, okay? So, uh, uh, that being said, I have a very special video planned for you guys today. Um, so this year I'm going to try to do one video, well, I'm going to try to do two videos a week, um, in the month of December. That's my goal. Uh, is to try to film two videos a week uh, in the month of December. So, that being said, um, this is my new phone that I ended up getting. It is the Motorola uh, One Vision. Um, I decided to go for this phone over the Samsung A50 um, because even though it was a little bit more expensive, um, I really love the, the pinhole notch design. Uh, it reminds me a bit of like a Galaxy S10e or something like that. It's it's I really like that kind of design style, and I love the fact that when I'm watching YouTube videos on my phone, I can expand it and it will um, it will fill the screen to make the viewing experience more immersive. The other thing I love about Motorola phones that I haven't seen on any other company's phones. I haven't seen them on Apple phones. Not that I ever use Apple phones, but. Um, I used to. Uh, so I haven't seen them on there. I haven't seen it on Samsung phones. Um, I haven't really see it, seen it on any other phones. And that is an alternative to always on display, which I really like. Um, yes, I like an always on display, but the problem that I found with it was that, you know, I don't mind icons coming up, but... <clears throat> I don't necessarily always want all of my notifications right there on display, you know what I mean? I want to be able to see them quickly at a glance if I pick up my phone or whatever, but I don't always necessarily want them on the screen there for everyone to see. Um, so, you know, I don't mind the icons, but as for what the notification is, I don't necessarily always like that. So this Motorola um, feature that I want to talk about actually solves that issue and it's called peak display so you can probably see here I'll just show you hopefully it won't um, so if you look here at my phone you can see it's off 
And if I lift it up, oh, there it is. See, it says P it the the time shows up. And if I had a notification, but the whole thing is is that when I pick it up, the time shows up. And if I had a notification, just the icon would show up down here. So it wouldn't show the actual display. It keeps the screen off until I lift it up, at which point my time and battery percentage, that's another thing I love about Motorola phones, is how it shows the battery percentage right there in that circle uh, on the screen. That's really a nice touch. Um, I really hope they don't ever get rid of that or peak display. I love peak display. Um, it just, it, so it would show you the icons down below. And if you wanted to know what what a notification says, you can like touch and hold it and it will give you a peek. It will show you what, what your notification says without having to unlock your phone. Um, so it's a really, really nice kind of um, alternative to always on display because it it just it is really nice to be able to have your phone screen off if you're not using it and that way you don't have to worry about other people um, you know sneaking a peek at your phone or whatever it's just it's nice to be able to have that I like peak display better than always on display to be honest with you I do um, so thank you Motorola for peak display okay so yeah so that's why I that's one of the reasons I went with this phone um, but I just really like the design. I like, I mean, the other camera too had triple cameras on the back, but I think these ones are a bit better. Um, I don't mind sacrificing the on-screen fingerprint sensor, to be honest, in order to get that thin hole notch design. That's what really sold me on this phone. And uh, also the amount of storage. I was able to get 128 gigs. Um, and the other nice thing about Motorola phones, no bloatware. So. That's really, really quite fantastic. So this is my new phone. Um, and on my new phone, um, I have a, I have today uh, five tips for you guys. I was talking about Christmas. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. But I was talking about Christmas and um, how I want to do uh, two videos a week during the month of December. So this got me thinking about Christmas. I already have all my Christmas shopping done. Um, but I was thinking about it and I thought to myself, Christmas can be an intense time of year um, for autistics. And that's putting it lightly, can be. Uh, so I wanted to give you guys five tips um, from the point of view of an autistic person of things to do uh, if you have a loved one who is autistic uh, things that might be helpful to you, or they may not, but I, uh, I just wanted to give you these tips, and hopefully, maybe, uh, some of you will find these helpful. So, without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so, the first tip is, <clears throat> um, to plan ahead with your loved one. So, um, autistics, just like anyone else, like to have some agency over our own lives and over what what we would like to do. So, you know, if you're planning a traveling itinerary or even if you're not, um, plan ahead for ahead of time for what is going to be happening. You know, sit down with your loved one and explain to them, however that may work for you, um, however that whatever form that might take for you. Uh, whether that's a social story or whether that's just talking with them um, or whether that's, you know, showing a video. Uh, regardless, help your loved one to prepare for what to expect and offer them some choices um, with regards to the plans. You know, like with me, um, I, my husband and I um, have actually taken over the planning of Christmas this year. Um, now, obviously, for a lot of people, that may not be something that's possible. Um, but even something as simple as, you know, uh, which corner of the living room do you think the Christmas tree should be in? This corner or that corner? You know, that kind of thing. 
Um, you know, would you like to open your presents? Um, would you like to open your stocking uh, Christmas morning before dinner? Or would you like to wait and open it with your presents after supper? Um, you know, that kind of thing. Whatever form that might take for you. But the, the point here is, is offering some control and some agency and some choice as to the Christmas plans and and what is going on there. Okay, tip number two is uh, preferred items. So especially if you're traveling, making sure that your loved one has uh, preferred items. So their phone, their tablet, um, their noise-canceling headphones, um, things that you know that make it uh, easy that they enjoy and that make it easier for them to cope. Um, make sure that you have some of these items with you, especially if you're traveling. Um, but even if you're at home, you know, if there's a lot of people around, uh, you know, maybe just allowing them to sit and play a game on their on their iPad, uh, you know, with their headphones on for, you know, 10 minutes while people are visiting and then having them take it off and come and socialize for a bit and then they can go back to it kind of thing you know that kind of thing can really make a huge difference um in terms of sensory input and overwhelm and just making things easier to cope with in the holiday season okay number three is scheduled downtime so um i don't know if you guys have ever heard of the spoon theory but um, autistics generally have a kind of limited amount of sort of sensory energy, like how much they can handle in terms of socialization, in terms of sensory input, in terms of all these kinds of things, processing everything. So um, those kinds of things take a lot of energy. And in order to kind of replenish our batteries, it's important to have downtime and to have it scheduled ahead of time so that, you know, the person isn't just, you know, taking off in the middle of, you know, uh, someone else giving a toast or something, you know, or, or, you know, having a meltdown and making a big scene because they haven't had a chance to recharge their batteries. Um, not that, you know, having a meltdown is a bad thing, but it's just, it's not enjoyable for the autistic person, I can tell you that much right now. And it's something that will happen if we don't have a chance to recharge our batteries. So scheduling downtime, scheduling time for everyone, I think, just to sit and relax and enjoy the gifts they've been given and just sort of recharge um, is important. It's important to take small breaks, I think, throughout kind of the holiday season and all of the the chaos that often accompanies that. Um, luckily for my husband and I, we're scheduling quite a quiet Christmas here. Um, it's just going to be immediate family and, you know, a small dinner, small Christmas dinner and opening of presents, but it's not going to be anything too uh, too intense or crazy or spectacular. It's just going to be a nice, quiet family Christmas. So, uh, Okay, number four. Spend time with the dog. <laughs> so um, one of the things that um, animals, um, many autistic people really love animals. And uh, whether you have a pet or a service dog or an emotional support animal or a, you know, whatever it might be, or even just taking some time during the holidays to go to an animal shelter or a petting zoo and just, you know, spending some time with some animals, it really can help uh, with de-stressing uh, quite a lot. And it can also help with um, just giving the person something to focus on other than the chaos around Christmas, and it can help with sensory overload as well. Um, so, so the other thing I wanted to address in this video right now is why I don't show Willow and Evie a lot in my videos. Um, so if you're new here and you don't know, 
Willow is an Australian cattle dog slash blue healer. She's mine. I got her when she was a little puppy, and I am training her currently um, to be a service dog for me um, to help me with meltdowns and also uh, panic attacks as I have anxiety. Um, so I am training her to um, help me. She gives me a deep pressure input um, and also... Um, helps me to know when one is coming on so I can get somewhere. Um, also, she um, will help me just just giving me something to focus on to help uh, keep me calm. Um, so she's doing very, very well. Um, and Evie is Matt's puppy. Um, he is training her himself. It's the same sort of situation, except uh, he is training her um, as a psychiatric service dog um, for himself. Uh, he is training her on his own as well. Neither of us are working formally with any trainer or organization, but he is training her as a psychiatric service dog uh, for himself as well. So... So I'm not going to get into a big discussion about, you know, owner training versus, um, versus uh, you know, working with a, a, a trainer or whatever. I'm not going to get into a big discussion about that. That's a whole other topic, and that's outside the confines of this video. Um, it's just I wanted to let you guys know that the reason I don't show them a lot in my videos is because um, even though they are doing very, very well with their training, uh, it's just something I'm not comfortable with. Um, you know, uh, my videos when I'm filming are a time when I'm able to, you know, uh, uh, they have uh, an area that we have set up for them um, where they can just go down there together and play and just sort of have a bit of time for themselves. Um, so they're not always, always on duty. Um yeah, so we we are training them ourselves. We're we're not uh, we're not like I said we're not working formally with any trainer or organization. Um, so, but we have a we have an area set up for them uh, for them downstairs where they can just have some time off. I mean, obviously they're not always on duty when they're up here either, but it's their area where they can run around and 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 just you know be dogs we put them down there we give them you know a couple nice treats to chew on and they love it so when i'm filming my videos is a nice time when i can just give them some time off and time to themselves and that sort of thing and uh when when they're up here uh and when we're out in public when we're training and stuff um i'm just not comfortable uh just having a camera going and and you know shoving a camera in their faces it's just not something that i'm I'm really big on so that's why we my husband and I uh, but and and me you know both of us we don't generally Evie and Willow are not really featured in my videos um, too much um, so but you will see them in thumbnails um, quite a bit so maybe in the future at some point I will feature them more in my videos but for now uh, I think I'm just going to uh, keep it the way it is. So, okay. So, my last and final tip for Christmas um, around autism is to do what makes you happy. So, there's kind of this. I I feel like anyway. There's kind of this sentiment around Christmas that you know you have to have a. a a big dinner, big family event, and, you know, everyone has to come, and, and, you know, you have to have a tree, and all the lights up, you know, decorating every, you know, inch of your home, and, you know, it, it has to be, like, this big, stressful event and ordeal, and you have to go and stand in lines at the store, and all this kind of stuff. You know, if you're more comfortable doing your Christmas shopping online and having things sent to you rather than going to the store, do it. Go for it. That's what I did. Um, you know, if you're more comfortable having just a, a, a quieter Christmas uh, with just immediate family, go ahead. That's what we're doing this year. Um, if you're more comfortable having a bigger do, then do that. Or even if you don't want to have any 
Christmas dinner, if you just want to have, you know, people over for drinks and presents, or maybe you don't want to have anyone over at all. Maybe you just want to have a quiet Christmas with just you and your spouse, or just you by yourself, or, or you and a couple of friends. You know, it's up to you, really, what you want to do. You know, hell, if you want to spend Christmas by yourself, go for it. You know, do what makes you happy. Don't feel pressured to have the same Christmas as everybody else. Um, especially if you are autistic and, you know, having to conform to these, you know, kind of social norms around Christmas is very stressful for you. Uh, don't, don't feel the pressure to, uh, to do that. Do what makes you happy. And uh, I think that's a tip for everyone, autistic or not. Um, is, and if you have a loved one who's autistic, allow them to do what makes them happy, what you know makes them happy. Okay? All right, so uh, that's it for that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so you're update, like you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. Um, and I will see you all next time. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.